Hi, my name is Amy Coleman, and I'm the Mental Health Reentry Program Manager for the DuPage County Health Department. I work within the DuPage County Correctional Center to help link people with mental health and substance use services upon release. Welcome to this brief overview of the use of Narcan or Naloxone for the reversal of an opioid overdose. Next slide. Today we are going to be talking about the basics of understanding the opioid overdose problem in our community. We will talk about the public act that allows you to use Narcan without the fear of legal repercussions. We will take a look at how opioids work and most importantly, how to recognize and respond to an overdose through the administration of Narcan or Naloxone. In this slide, we're looking at the past few years of data as it relates to opioid overdose deaths and opioid overdose reversals or saves in DuPage County. The green dots indicate reversals through the use of Narcan, and we can see here that overdose saves have been increasing steadily over the last number of years. We can also see in this slide that overdose deaths are not strictly related to heroin, but are incre increasingly related to heroin combined with fentanyl and fentanyl alone, and truly highlights the problem that fentanyl has been causing in our community. This is a demographic slide showing the breakdown of who has been affected by race, gender, and age. In DuPage County, the vast majority of those who are overdosing are white males, with a split in ages between 19 to 29 and over 30. This slide highlights the need for Narcan usage in the community by showing a breakdown of locations within the county where overdoses are occurring. The highest number of overdoses are occurring in houses and apartments, which emphasizes the need to have Narcan directly in the hands of community members. So why do we focus on opioid overdose? It is true that abstinence or non-use from opiates would be the most effective overdose prevention option. But the reality is, is that people struggle with opi opioid use. So naloxone or Narcan is a safe, effective drug used to reverse their effects of opioids and can give people another chance to make changes in their lives and work toward recovery. It is important to note, however, that naloxone has no effect on overdoses not related to opioids. Op overdose deaths can be prevented both by first responders as well as bystanders by yourself, like yourself. Most people with substance use disorders are working toward achieving abstinence from drugs. However, this can be a lengthy process. And as I said earlier, the use of naloxone can give people another opportunity at recovery. The next few slides highlight the legal considerations surrounding the use of naloxone or Narcan and the reasons behind why community members can administer the drug. Narcan is a safe and effective tool and the state of Illinois has made it a law that if a person is administering Narcan in good faith and they believe that a person is suffering from opioid related overdose, that if there is a negative outcome, that there may be no legal, legal repercussions. The goal of this law is really to take away the fear of punishment in the event that a bystander uses Narcan for what is believed to be an opioid overdose. Okay, so how does naloxone work? Naloxone has a stronger affinity to the opioid receptors in the brain than opioids themselves. So in essence, they knock the opioids off the receptors and replace them for a short period of time. In doing this, it allows the person to breathe again and reverses the overdose. Narcan assists with opioid overdose for all opioids, but not all opioids are the same strength. There are multiple opioids on the market, both legal and illegal, to codeine at the minimum, to fentanyl and carfentanyl at the maximum. So it's important to recognize that drugs found in the street may be much stronger than a prescription medication. Risk factors that contribute to an overdose. So these are some of the things to be aware of if you are wanting to assist someone who may be at risk of an overdose. A person's individual tolerance can raise over time with use. At a time when a person's tolerance has been lower, 
such as after time in jail or prison, after detox or after treatment, a person's tolerance may be lower than they anticipate. During this time, a person may use the amount of drug they believe they have a tolerance for and subsequently overdose. Mixing substances, especially other substances that are central nervous system depressants, such as mixing alcohol and opioids. And then the next few are some common sense risk factors, poor health, previously experienced an overdose, changes in the strength and content of street drugs, and using alone. So there are some very important differences between what a person looks like who's extremely high and a person who is overdosing. A person who is really high will show relaxed muscles. Any speech that they had will be slurred or slowed. They'll look sleepy and keep nodding off. And they will respond to stimulations such as yelling, pinching, or a sternal rub. On the flip side, a person who's overdosing may have a deep snore or gurgle, also known as a death rattle. There will be infrequent or no breathing and a slow pulse. Their skin may be pale and clammy, and they'll have a heavy nod and respond to no stimulation. Narcan is specifically for those people experiencing an overdose. So if you attempt to wake them and they are unresponsive, it is likely you will need to utilize Narcan. Next, we have a video for you to watch that demonstrates the steps taken to use naloxone. Narcan nasal spray is not a substitute for emergency medical care. As with any drug, you need to be aware of important safety information concerning its use. Please see indications and important safety information at the end of this video. Also, please see accompanying full prescribing information in the use of this product. Narcan nasal spray is an emergency treatment for a known or suspected opioid overdose. The appropriate use of Narcan nasal spray can help you save a life. Narcan nasal spray is not a substitute for emergency medical care. As with any drug, you need to be aware of important safety information concerning its use. If you encounter someone who is unresponsive and you suspect an overdose, first shake their shoulders and shout their name. Kevin. Ask if he or she is okay. Hey, can you hear me? Check for signs of an overdose, unresponsive to touch or voice. Breathing is slow, uneven, or has stopped. <sighs> Snoring, gasping, or gurgling sounds. Fingernails or lips are blue or purple. Administer Narcan nasal spray as quickly as possible if someone is unresponsive and an opioid overdose is suspected, even when in doubt, because prolonged respiratory depression may result in damage to the central nervous system or even death. Lay the person on their back to receive a dose of Narcan nasal spray. Remove Narcan nasal spray from the box. Peel back the tab with the circle to open it. Remove and review the printed quick start guide inside the package. Hold the Narcan nasal spray with your thumb on the bottom of the plunger and your first and middle fingers on either side of the nozzle. Do not press the plunger to test or prime the device. If you do, you will waste all or part of the dose of medication. Tilt the person's head back and provide support under the neck with your hand. Gently insert the tip of the nozzle into one nostril until your fingers on either side of the nozzle are against the person's nose. Press the plunger firmly to give the full dose of Narcan nasal spray. Remove the device from the nostril after giving the dose. After you have given this medication, seek emergency help right away. Narcan nasal spray is not a substitute for emergency medical care. I'm with somebody who stopped breathing. I, I think they've had an overdose. Move the person on their side after giving Narcan nasal spray. If possible, put their hands under their head and bend their upper leg forward. This helps prevent the person from rolling onto their stomach. This is known as the recovery position. Continue to watch the person closely. If they do not wake up or respond to your voice or touch, or if they do not seem to be breathing normally within two to three minutes, use a new Narcan nasal spray to give an additional dose in the other nostril. Acute opiate withdrawal symptoms may occur from use of Narcan nasal spray in patients who are opioid dependent. Symptoms include body aches, diarrhea, increased heart rate or tachycardia, fever, runny nose, sneezing. 
goosebumps, also known as piloerection, sweating, yawning, nausea or vomiting, nervousness, restlessness or irritability, shivering or trembling, abdominal cramps, weakness and increased blood pressure. When the emergency is over, put the Narcan nasal spray back in its box and throw it away in a place that is away from the reach of children. In addition to watching this video, please read the quick start guide that comes with Narcan nasal spray before using it. Talk to a healthcare professional if you have any questions about how to administer Narcan nasal spray. Please read the indications and important safety information that follows. Store Narcan nasal spray at room temperature between 59 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 to 25 degrees centigrade. Do not freeze Narcan nasal spray. Keep Narcan nasal spray in the box until ready to use. Protect from light. Replace Narcan nasal spray before the expiration date on the box. Keep Narcan nasal spray and all medicines out of the reach of children. It's important to understand from the video that once the Narcan has been administered, that the emergency is not over and that 911 should be called immediately. There's also a quick start guide located within each container of Narcan if needed as well. This slide reviews the recovery position that was mentioned in the video. Once Narcan has been administered, it is important to move the person into recovery position, which is on their side with their hands supporting the head and a bent knee to prevent rolling. If you have any questions about opiates naloxone or opioid overdose or are looking for help with the substance use disorder, please go to hopedupage.org. It has the Illinois Opioid Helpline number as well as various tools and information. And if you have any questions about this presentation, you can check out the FAQ video or contact the health department at dnp at dupagehealth.org. Thanks.